ability to recognize and draw board models is very important. Hi, this is Mr. B, and welcome to the Learning Zone. In this video, I'll explain how to use the periodic table to draw board models of the atoms. Atoms are composed of three basic subatomic particles. The proton, which has a positive charge, the uncharged neutron, and the negatively charged electron, where the proton and the neutron will combine to form the nucleus of the atom. And the negatively charged electrons are located outside of the nucleus in discrete positions. The information required to draw a proper Bohr model may be found on the periodic table, where on the periodic table the elements are arranged in order of increase in atomic number. Elements found in the same column will possess similar chemical properties. In addition, these elements will also possess the same number of valence electrons, which are the electrons located on their outer electron shell. Elements found in the same row will possess the same maximum number of electron shells. The in a Bohr model of an atom, the nucleus is surrounded by the electron shells. The Bohr model is also known as a planetary model, where the nucleus represents the sun, and the electron shells represent the orbits of the planets. The electron shells may be designated by using either letters or numbers. If letters are being used, then shell number one will be the K shell. And shell number seven, for a very large atom, will be the Q shell. If numbers are being used, then we say that shell number one is designated as N equals one and is representative of the elements found in period one. For shell number five, in a larger atom, we say N is equal five. And this is representative of the atoms found in period five. Consider the element nitrogen, which is found in group 15 in period 2. Based on this information, the Bohr model of a nitrogen atom should possess two electron shells. And five electrons are found on its outermost electron shell. Based on the information found on the periodic table, the sum for nitrogen is in, and its average atomic mass is 14.0067 where the average atomic mass represents the weighted averages of all known isotopes of the elements. The atomic number for nitrogen is 7 and its electron configuration is 2-5. Using this information we may draw a proper Bohr model where according to the periodic table the atomic number is 7. This implies that the nucleus of the nitrogen atom will possess 7 protons. To determine the number of neutrons, we must first round the average atomic mass to a whole number. For 14.0067, we'll definitely round to 14. And then we subtract 7 from 14. 7 from 14 is 7. So in the nucleus of nitrogen, we find 7 neutrons. The nitrogen atom possesses two electron shells where two electrons are found on the first shell, or the K shell, or N equals 1, and five electrons are found on the second shell, or valence shell, where the valence shell is represented by the letter L, or N is equal to 2. So the proper Bohr model of a nitrogen atom will possess seven protons, seven neutrons, two electron shells with an electron configuration which indicates the number of electrons found on each shell to be 2-5. Now let's consider the element magnesium, Mg, which is located in period 3 and group 2. According to the information found on the periodic table, the average atomic mass of magnesium 
will be 24.305 with an atomic number of 12 and an electron configuration of 2A2. Therefore, the Bohr model of magnesium will consist of a nucleus and three electron shells, where in the nucleus we find 12 protons. Rounding the average mass, which is 24.305 to 24, and subtracting 12 will yield 12 neutrons. The electron configuration is 2A2, where two electrons are found on the K shell, eight electrons are found on the L shell, and two electrons are found on the M shell, which represents the valence shell. This concludes my video on how to recognize and draw Bohr models. Hopefully my explanation has been both helpful and informative. Thanks for watching.